wheelchair all day. Can you please move it now and show who you are, rather than trying to scare us earlier on, please? Why don't the three of you, with just one camera, just go and check and see if the wheelchair has moved? We're with you. Guys, it's just calm and go. It hasn't moved. Has it moved? No. It's not moved at all? No. Right, I've got a different place for us to go. Our last location. In here. No, 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 it is, but there's a... All of oh them. My God. All of them. Where have they come from? Oh, God. Where are they? What's that? Is that the marble? Yeah. Oh, she loves those marbles. Kitties love marbles. Are they in the bedroom? Where are you? Yeah. 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 I heard it. What you got here? I was standing here. What did she do? She went, oh, Oh, hello, darling. Shh. Are you here? Where's the marbles? No, don't ask her back, she'll throw them again at us. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> right, she knows I don't like the drawing in my hair. It's fine to we play on the ground. If you throw me a marble, I'll play what back with you. Someone just... On route to the final challenge of the night, Una's little ghostly girl springs into action again, and the marbles start flying. Yes, of course, we'll go together. What the? Ah! Oh my god, that was right. No, 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 Right by my foot. Every though. time, every time I, I know the girls run around my legs, I say she's only like this height because my legs freeze and they all get like oh. yeah. oh. this. That's all right next to us. You know, right next to us. Come on. Whilst Tibet, Molly, Frankie, Una, and their marble chucking little friend make their way to the attic, let's check on Rochelle and Vanessa's state of mind in the capable hands of Professor Jeffrey Beatty. So actually, the two of you have been through quite a lot here emotionally. And I'm really concerned about how you feel now. Well, I didn't believe ghosts were real, but now I definitely do. Well, I've never seen anything like it, and I've just had to get out of there again. There's no bloody way I'm getting back up them stairs again. No way, literally. I'm done. Done. Oh. Ghosts stay up you my life. Because they're angry ghosts. They're not, they're not nice. No. I, I, do you think you're up to going back into the house? No, no I'm not going fucking back in. way. I said no last time, and I bloody went back in like a fool. I'm not doing it again. Mm -mm. Rochelle. Are you going to go back in? No, I can't deal with no, it. No, I just don't. Oh, God, I saw, I've never felt like that before in my life. Gosh. I'm just happy that Una's made a friend. <laughs> oh, ah! oh, no, oh, no. Oh, shit, that came from up here. Ah! No, please, just let me out. I don't want her to drop on my head. Please, stuff it. Oh, hello, sweetie. Where's that marble gone? I'll throw it back for you, if you like. If they've just got a marble, marble thrown at her. Yes, I know. Come on. We've had it thrown at us as well. It's fine. Oh, no. Exactly. Little girl, please stop with the marbles now. Yvette guides our spirited threesome to their final destination. This is where the spirit of a neglected old lady returns to rock back and forth in her rickety rocking chair. Staff even called the police as they were so disturbed by the noises. On arrival, the police found nothing. Go on, in you go. In you go. You're coming in. I, I will, I promise. I'll bring Shut up the rear. Room. I will, go on. That's me. Yeah. Go on, then. Fabulous. Right, Yvette, come in with I'm, us. I'm, I'm there. Right, that rocking chair there rocks on its own. Right. So you've got to ask out, call out, maybe a couple of one, take it in turns. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Take it. Take it in turns to sit in it and ask it to, to rot in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look nervous because you're the brave one. Yvette leaves the girls in the room alone to experience the rocking and rolling by themselves. And let's see if brave old Una draws the short straw again. OK, I'm sitting. I'm going to sit Mom, down. I'm going to one. I'm just going to sit down. Ooh. No. OK. Oh, stem it, stem it, stem it, stem it, stem it. Sitting down. You have to ask them to rock it. Please, please rock the chair for Una. Just nice and gently, 
Just start rocking the chair, please. Can you? Are you there? Yeah. Three times. Yeah, three times. We really want the three of us to stay here together. Oh no. <laughs> it's only me. Now, two of you come out and leave Una in here on her own. Okay. Right. Out. <gasps> oh, for fuck, she loves them things. Who that? The girl. The girl loves the marbles. Hi, girl. Who drew that marble? Oh, sorry, because I want to no. Oh, no, that... I can't stay here on my own. Yes, she can. Come on, it's, we're all outside this door. Come be here with me. Oh, she's scared. Coming up, Una gets motherly with a ghost. I love you. They think it's all over. Thank you, Thank our you. true love. <laughs> but the spirits of Wern have a few more tricks to play on our brave threesome. <laughs> on the desolate Wern estate, the Saturdays are approaching the end of a nail-biting and chilling encounter with the supernatural. Vanessa and Rochelle have reached breaking point and have left the manor in a state of anxiety, while Frankie, Molly and Una are forging bravely on, supported by the fearless Yvette Fielding. Throughout this night of fright, the Saturdays have endured horrendous crashes, <laughs> emotional stress, Oh, my God. And downright terror. <laughs> Rochelle and Vanessa are still hiding away in Professor Jeffrey Beatty's sanctuary. The others, with true grit, press on. Una is now locked in the attic room, alone with a particularly chatty spirit, while Molly, Frankie and Yvette stand guard outside. Is there anyone in here? Why do you keep knocking three times? One, two, three. Yes? No? Una, say I love you. Why? But who's I love you to? Just say I love you. I love you. Three means I love you. Oh. So the little girl is obviously very attached to you. Ask her to touch your hand. I don't really want her to touch my hands. Maybe ask her to rock the chair. Yeah, push the chair. Can you push the chair, but really softly? It's not happening. How do you feel? <sighs> Why is there so many knocks? They're loud. It's not the same knocking as the little girls' knocking. You know the difference? Mm. The yeah. The way I love you was the soft. And really? that's different. And I just don't. <gasps> no, that's, that's just because I just got out of it. Oh. Yeah, she's just got out of it. Yeah. Let's go. I think that you guys have done so well. You all have. You've done absolutely brilliantly. You really have, but I think it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. We'll call it a night. Well done. Una leaves the attic room a little confused and disturbed. Yvette has a thought that a more dangerous spirit had entered the room. She decides to close the curtain on tonight's proceedings. But the spirits aren't finished yet. Oh, oh, I knew no. she was going to do that. Did you just touch me? No. Oh, I promise you, promise you somebody animal. just, I promise you, I promise you, something just tapped me on the shoulder. It's a little girl saying goodbye. Oh. Say goodbye to the little girl. Bye. Bye, little girl. Bye, little girl. Bye, little girl. Children, how was it? Sorry, that was me. I kicked it. I kicked it. Oh.
Oh. I kicked it, it went that way, and then all of a sudden it went. Oh, okay. Oh, really? No, 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 not because no, no. I kicked it. Oh, no, it was like, I kicked it, it went lightly, and then it went. Anyway, she's fine, she's nice. What are we doing? Right, okay, just watch your head. Okay, thank you. You threw that with force. Throw it with force no. again. Like that. Excellent. Right, come on, let's walk. No, because she's going to oh, no, walk in there with a wheelchair. wheelchair. The wheelchair's not. The wheelchair. <laughs> After this final burst of activity from the mischievous little girl of Wern, Molly, Una, Rochelle, Vanessa and Frankie begin to wind down from this arduous and testing tour of the other world. So what's tonight's ghost hunt taught me about human psychology? Well, I think it's taught me a number of things. Some of them are actually quite profound. I think the first thing is that underlying personality predicts behavior in many situations, but not all situations. I wouldn't have predicted Una becoming the leader in the way that she did and overcoming aspects of her personality to be the leader. But when she succumbed to fear, it was extraordinary watching the whole group fall apart. It went hysterical because they couldn't deal with it. <coughs> they were looking to their strongest member and when she couldn't cope anymore, they couldn't cope. I think it also taught me something about what happens if you get people acting in a certain way? Can you please move it now and show who you are? Talking to ghosts, waving at ghosts. A rational mind notices these behaviours and thinks, ooh, if I'm doing all this, perhaps there's something in it. Oh, because you shouted at it, Vanessa, so if it does, it's your fucking fault. If you get people to behave in certain ways, you can actually change their underlying attitudes and beliefs through that mechanism. I'm feeling drained. I don't think I've ever been so tense and uptight for such a long amount of time. Whereas I love to perform and I'd like to do it over and over again, this, I think it's an experience that I could probably be like, yep, yeah, did that, let's move on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel exhausted, absolutely exhausted. It was weird because beforehand I didn't really believe in ghosts and now there was definitely some activity up there. Like, you just can't deny it. Things happen to us which just cannot be explained and there was definitely nobody there. <laughs> real and they're there and there was no one else making them and it was just this strange ghost-like sounds that I, you know it's so weird to see it all happen in front of you is just absolutely bizarre you know it's definitely an experience <laughs> and it's definitely proved that they are real and i just hope that it's not gonna like stay with me for ages now so that i'm freaked out for life oh my lordy it's very cold here the scariest moment was definitely when someone touched my leg and then they blew on me. That was really frightening. I hated that. Oh, I'm not joking, I promise you, please, I don't want to get out of this bit. From then, it was all over, because then Yvette asked them, have you taken a liking to Rochelle? And they replied, yes. They were, she was like, does she remind you of someone? They were like, yes. And I was on edge, thinking the whole time he was following me and he weren't going to leave me alone. So that was it then. I was not enjoying the rest of it. Oh, no, please, I don't want to stay in here. Something just blew on my neck. Yvette looked after us massively. She was kind of like, you know, a bit of a mum, really, because she, she was there to look after us if we were nervous. But then also she'd be like, come on, girls, get a grip and get on with it. Come on, Molly. Come on, let's let's, get, let's, let's get to it. Every time she said, throw a glass or throw something at us, I'm thinking, are you mad? We're all going to end up getting knocked out. I couldn't even stay for the Ouija board. I don't believe in it. I don't want to get involved in it, so I had to just leave. That was him whining, I'm sorry, no. I would not me. I think the scariest part for me is when something touched my back. I, that really freaked me out. Everyone screamed. It was a reaction to her scream. <laughs> I screamed so loud that I've partially lost a part of my voice. And then when I had to, to leave when we were upstairs, it was all a bit much. <laughs> I think the Ouija board, you know, shook me up a little bit and I just thought I can't handle this anymore. My body was just like, no. <laughs> Oh my god, it's moving! Fuck! I was a massive baby in parts, and then other parts I was okay, but I don't think anyone coped as well as Una. Una was definitely the most fearless. Like, she got in the lift, she sat in a room on her own, she spoke to the guys, she threw marbles at them. Good girl! Go on, Una! I was really impressed with her. 
She was so brave, and I knew she was brave before, but you know, obviously dealing with ghosts is a completely different thing. You can't really compare it to anything, and she was really just, she was right up there, so we were like, go on, Una. Whoever was moving the wheelchair all day, can you please move it now and show who you are, rather than trying to scare us earlier on, please?